Welcome to Hillside Farm and my name is Ruth McKinney and we are here doing a summer series of all things summer. From family traditions during the summer to summer recipes, how to entertain outside, all sorts of things to help equip your family and give you a tool to make memories this summer. Today though, we are going to talk about my very favorite subject and that is celebrating people. In particular, birthdays. So. Some of you may have come from a home where you didn't celebrate birthdays when you grew up or, you know, I mean, for me, I think my mom cried. I'm absolutely sure, actually. She cried on every single birthday she ever had. And part of it was expectations weren't met or the kids didn't celebrate her or her husband forgot her. And I really, Bob and I, when we were thinking about how to make people feel loved on their birthday really thought through birthdays. So I wanted to share with you a bit of how we tackled birthdays and hope it might help you. All right, here's what we do. As you know, we have five children. Before each child's birthday, we find out their favorite color of the year, you know, because with kids that, num that color changes every single year. I mean, one year, my daughter's favorite color was cheetah. We then go ahead and buy 100 balloons in that color. And sometimes we've mixed colors, but we buy 100 balloons. And for years, the night before someone's birthday, we would by hand blow up 100 balloons. And I think it was my Uncle Hubert or my dad who was visiting at some point, and they said, what the heck? Why are we hand blowing up all of these? Aren't there machines for this? And I don't mean the helium machines, but like machines. Well, if you look on Amazon, I think they're 11 or $12. You plug them in. You stick the balloon on, it blows up in like two seconds. You just have to tie them. So that's what we started to do. So we blow up a hundred balloons and fill that child's bedroom before they wake in the morning. In addition to that, every single person in the family writes letters to that person and we wallpaper their whole bedroom door in letters, literally cover them and wrap their door. So from the time they wake up until the time they go to bed, they feel celebrated. So there are certain birthdays though where different things happen, more special things. I'll give you an idea. When our kids turned five, particularly our four daughters, clearly, they all wanted American Girl dolls. So their fifth birthday present, we would get on a train, go to New York City to the American Girl doll where they got to pick their first American Girl doll. So it's just setting certain birthdays aside for different things. When our kids turn 13, it's kind of a rite of passage age, right? So many different cultures celebrate 13 as becoming an adult or growing up. So what we did for each of our kids, several weeks before their 13th birthday, I send a letter to all friends, family who know this particular child to write letters, letters of why do they love that child, what do they hope for for the future for that child? What is suggestions or um, any kind of encouragement they can give that child? So this was Scotty's 13th birthday book. And it just starts out, it starts out with basically a letter. This is a letter from me and a letter from her dad. And we go from here and I collect pictures of their whole growing up and next to the pictures are letters that somebody's written. So they have this for the rest of their life as something, I mean, I'm telling you, you read it in 10 years and it all rings true whether you're 23, 33, and it's a memory book. So that's what we do for 13. Now, when the kids hit 16, there's another big birthday in our house. And we started something with 16 gifts. One gift every 16 hours of the day. So let's say they're getting up for school at six o'clock in the morning. That's usually when we start it. They get their first gift to open. Now I'm not a house where we get a lot of sugar cereals. So birthdays have been used in our house as, okay, we're gonna give them their favorite sugar cereal. I wrap up a box of cereal or their favorite gum. These aren't huge gifts. Again, birthdays aren't about spending all the money it's about being thoughtful and creative. I mean, when my kids are in school, the other kids are going to their classrooms every hour to deliver their next gift. It literally lasts 16 hours, and on the 16th hour is their big gift. So on a particular year, it might have been their phone, 
or it might have been something really special. But it's not about the money spent. And I think that that's what Bob and I were trying to work through when we were figuring out birthdays. Here we were attending all these birthdays that our kids' friends were having, where they were having petting zoos, or they were having clowns and magicians, and it just, it just seemed like too much to us. And it wasn't about the birthday, and it wasn't about celebrating the kid. It was almost about entertaining everyone you know. So doing and implementing things from, you know, when, when they're getting the balloons and their doors wrapped, they choose every meal of that day. And then for everybody, when we go to dinner, the night of a birthday, we go around the table and we talk about, each person talks about their favorite thing about that birthday child. It ends up being a lot of tears, a lot of, it's given an opportunity for siblings to talk to siblings and celebrate them. They don't usually take that opportunity on a regular basis. So that's just something that we've done that, I mean, when our kids are in college, We've had the balloons and the balloon maker and papers and pens delivered to the school so that their friends can do it. Because I think if we were to miss a birthday, oh my gosh, my kids, they would kill us. The other thing is, is friends. So we've also learned how do you celebrate people um, that aren't e your children. We, I get a little bit, not tired of, but going to parties for friends and their birthday Sometimes they don't feel focused. It's just a cocktail hour and then everyone leaves and we celebrated them, awesome. But I love to make that one person feel seen, heard, and known. So what I do with birthdays is I let everyone know ahead of time who's going to be attending. Come up with one word that you would have to describe that birthday person. So I'll give you an example. A friend came and we had her 50th birthday and we did a whole, you know, slideshow with music. But then she had had, I think it was about 16 women around the table and each woman, woman knew ahead of time they were to come with a word. So whether it was loyal, whether it was generous, and then each woman gave the word they chose for her and said why. There was not one person in that room crying, not crying. And I can't tell you how many of those women said to me afterwards, will you please be the one that does my 50th? So it's not about the money. I think that's what I want to say to people. It's not about planning a big extravaganza. It's about making whoever's birthday it is or celebration it is to feel loved and to create memories. So keep the focus where it's supposed to be and celebrate people, create memories. Again, you can find, I have a whole section on birthdays in Hungry for Home, and if you visit the website, or actually my Instagram, Hungry for Home, I talk a lot about, on Tuesdays in particular, different hints on things to do for whether it's decorating, cooking, entertaining, or memory making. And then if you check my website at www.hungryforhome.com, and I just hope you're thoughtful in thinking through how to celebrate not only your friends outside of the home, but how to make people feel loved and special in the home. Have a great day.